Hey everybody, this is my very first video covering my third gen Acura Integra project. I have wanted one of these cars since I was 17 years old and I am now 40. In fact, I was 38 the very first time I actually got to drive an Integra. So I'm really excited about this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to swap out the factory steering wheel with a Momo tuner wheel using an NRG quick release and short hub adapter. I've done a few of these steering wheel swaps on a couple of my projects and so far the Acura Integra was the easiest. On the Xterra, I had to pull that wheel off so hard, I actually ended up breaking the clock spring because I pulled too hard and wasn't being careful. And then the next thing, we're just gonna try to bump it a little bit to kind of loosen the steering wheel. Just to loosen it up. There we go, whoops. And you wanna to try to pull that out gently. I yanked it really, really hard. Don't do that. With the Ranger, I had to jerry-rig a steering wheel puller because the one I had didn't actually fit, and so I had to MacGyver that one. Now, you could just try and tug on the steering wheel gently, but mine was on there pretty good, so I decided to try using a steering wheel puller. Now, the steering wheel puller in this case was not working so good. The middle section was not long enough to actually reach the bolt, so I had to jerry-rig and put a socket in there as an extension. So here you can see the socket that I used. I had a problem though with the teeth of the puller coming apart. You can see it slipping right about here. And then the whole thing would just come undone. So what I did was I used a C-clamp to tighten it all down and keep it together. And I was able to gently remove the steering wheel. But on the Acura, it was super simple. You pull off the 19 millimeter bolt and the thing just slid right off. Now, I say that this is the easiest because the actual swapping of the wheel part was easy, but the wiring for the horn and the airbag light were a little bit tricky. In this video, we're gonna cover swapping the wheel, putting on the hub adapter, setting up the steering wheel, and getting the horn working, but I'm going to give the airbag light delete a whole other video because it requires one extra step that the Xterra and the Ranger didn't require. Before you start, make sure that the wheels are straight and disconnect the battery. Let the car sit for 20 minutes. This is super important whenever you work with any of the airbag components. Be careful, you don't want the airbag exploding in your face. Using a screwdriver or a plastic trim removal tool, pop off the trim cover on the left side of the wheel and the trim cover on the cruise control button cluster. There are two bolts that secure the airbag to the steering wheel. You will need a T30 Torx head socket or a screwdriver to remove these bolts. A Torx screwdriver would probably be best. It's a tight fit getting to the screw on the right side of the wheel. My socket barely fit. Carefully pull the airbag towards you. Disconnect the airbag from the clock spring. Remove the 19 millimeter steering wheel lock nut. Free the airbag wiring from the plastic clips on the inside of the steering wheel. Unplug the cruise control from the steering wheel. Unplug the horn wire. and carefully pull the wheel off the column. Remove the two screws holding the steering column trim pieces together. Pinch the top trim piece to free it from the bottom and remove. Remove the screw holding the bottom trim piece to the steering column. Then remove the three screws securing the clock spring to the steering column. Carefully pull the clock spring off the column. The wires for the horn and cruise control pop out easily, but the wires for the airbag don't. I use wire snips to separate the wires from the clock spring. The back of the NRG short hub has some sort of conductive material that we will use to wire the horn. Carefully slide the hub adapter onto the steering column and match the notches on the adapter to the raised brass piece on the steering column. Thread the steering wheel nut by hand Then hit it gently with the impact. Twist the steering column till it locks. Then tighten to 36 foot pounds. Connect the horn wires on the hub adapter to the wires on the male side of the quick release. 
Position the quick release so that the NRG logo is on the top center. Start the Allen screws by hand in a crisscross pattern. Don't force these. I learned the hard way the first time I did this on my Xterra and had to use a tap and die set to fix threads on the adapter and a couple screws. Use the provided Allen wrench to tighten the screws in a crisscross pattern. Quick note, if you're not gonna use a quick release, you can actually just take your steering wheel and install it directly onto the hub adapter using the same process I used to screw on the male part of the quick release. If you are gonna use a quick release, just repeat that same exact process to attach the steering wheel to the female side of the quick release. One of the cool things about these quick releases is that they are interchangeable. I have the same quick release system on three of my vehicles. So I have one on the Xterra, I have one on the Ranger, and now on the Integra. And I can actually take these two wheels and put them on whichever car I want because they have the same exact quick release. This one actually started on my Nissan Xterra, which is in San Diego. I brought it up to I brought it up to Washington to use on the Ranger temporarily, but I definitely like this wheel a whole lot better for a couple reasons. Number one, it's got a leather trim on it, whereas this one has suede. And the, the tricky thing with suede is that it bleeds on your hands. So this black dye, if you drive this car for about an hour or so, you're gonna have black dye all over your hands and that's not really fun. The other thing I noticed is that with this wheel, it's a smaller diameter, it's 320 millimeters, whereas this is 350. So you can see here that the Momo wheel is, a, is slightly bigger. And this is nice because when you're driving, you can actually see your instrument cluster through the wheel. Whereas with this one, it's a little bit smaller, so it's hard to see the numbers on the gauge. The other thing I didn't like about the smaller wheel is that, especially on the Xterra, if I turn the wheel even just a little bit, the, the truck would go flying off in that direction. The bigger wheel feels a little bit more confidence inspiring. Here's some footage showing how to attach the steering wheel from my Xterra project. It would be the same process for the Integra. The horn wire is on the third terminal on the wiring connector. I use a scrap piece of wire to verify. To honk the horn, just tap the other end of the wire to anything metal to ground the circuit. Carefully move the wires to below the key cylinder to make it easier to work on them. Snip the blue horn wire from the connector and strip the end. Next, use your favorite method to extend the horn wire. I really like these solder and seal connectors. They're super easy to use. To wire the horn to the steering wheel, you'll need one of these shoehorn connectors. This part is probably not necessary, but I gently flattened out the shoehorn, thinking it might be easier to mount. I then used one of the screws that hold on the turn signal switch to mount the shoehorn connector. Make sure that the other end of the connector is making contact with the copper surface on the back of the steering hub and then tighten the screw. You can now test the horn by touching the horn wire to the horn shoe and pressing the horn button on the steering wheel. Next, put a male spade connector on the end of the horn wire. Slide it into the female end of the shoe horn connector and then bend the horn connector back toward the steering column. Here you can see how the shoe horn connector makes contact with the back of the hub adapter while the wheel is turning. I didn't film this part, but I did end up having to re-bend the shoehorn connector a little bit so that it had better contact with the back of the hub. To clean up the wiring, you can cut off the connector and tape off the cruise control wires. After this part, I spent about an hour or two trying to get the airbag light to go away. And normally all you need to do is use a resistor in between the two airbag wires, but for some reason this wasn't working. So after about two hours of playing around with it, I asked the Google machine and found out that the Hondas and Acuras actually have one extra step that you need to do in order to make the SRS light go away completely. So I'm actually gonna do a separate video just for that purpose. The good news is that up to this point, the car is drivable and the horn works. So if you don't care about the SRS light blinking at you, you can just put the trim pieces back on the steering column and call it a day. 
For me, it was dark, I was cold, I was annoyed, and I was over it, so that's what I did. But I don't like that blinking light, so I did come back the next day and got that fixed. So again, stay tuned for that video, that'll be coming up soon. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit the notify button so you know when the next video comes out, and stay tuned for more stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.